the 30th anniversary police officer Edward Byrne street unveiling ceremony. And to begin the ceremony, please rise for the presentation of our colors and the singing of our national anthem by police officer Makia Brown. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramp Hearts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocky tree cleared the bombs bursting in air. Keep roof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, Satan's that star spangled banner yet to wave o'er oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. And thank you so much, Officer Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for our invocation by New York City Police Department Assistant Chief, the Reverend Monsignor Robert J. Romano. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, last week we gathered in St. Patrick's Cathedral to celebrate the 52nd birthday of Eddie. As we gather here today to mark the 30th anniversary of his death, we come to do what our department does very well, and that is to always remember and to never forget. As we gather here today, we pray for the repose of his soul, that the Lord may give him the gift of eternal life. We pray for his family, for the consolation that they need as well. Lord, as we gather here today, we pray for all the members of our department, that they might be safe on and off duty. And as we gather here today, we are also mindful of the men and women of our armed forces who serve us so proudly, many of whom are members of the NYPD. Watch over them and bring them home soon. Finally, Lord, we place these prayers now in your name. Amen. And thank you, Monsignor Romano. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It's indeed my pleasure to introduce members of the day as assembled with us here this morning. I would ask that you please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Seen in the first row and on my right, the Chief of Department, Terrence Monaghan, the Police Commissioner of the City of New York, the Honorable James P. O'Neill, the Mayor of the City of New York, the Honorable Bill de Blasio, First Deputy Police Commissioner Ben Tucker, New York City Public Advocate, the Honorable Letitia James, Deputy Commissioner for Legal Matters, Larry Byrne, Seated in the second row, the commanding officer of the 103 Precinct, Deputy Inspector Peter Fortune, Police Department Assistant Chief Chaplain, the Reverend Monsignor Robert J. Romano, and the President of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, Patrick Lynch. And I also just wanted to recognize, seated in our audience, uh, various members of our executive staffs, Deputy Commissioners, Chiefs, uh, representatives from uh, District Attorney Judge Brown's office, our colleagues and brothers from FDNY, uh, from Engine Company 298. Thank you so much for coming today. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention some of our families here in the line of duty. Thank you also uh, for being with us. It's D my honor now to introduce the mayor of the city of New York, the Honorable Bill de Blasio. Good morning, everyone. This is a moment to remember. 
I agree with Monsignor. This, this department has a tremendous ability to remember its heroes, and the city does as well. And we do that because we want to keep everything they stood for alive. We want to remember them as part of our commitment to their families. We want to remember them because they inspire us to something greater. All of that can be said of Eddie Byrne, whose life spoke so powerfully to us and whose death became a clarion call for change in this city. I want to thank everyone who is here, everyone who is part of remembering him, especially his family who have done so much to keep his memory alive. I want to thank the leadership of the NYPD, Commissioner O'Neill and First Deputy Commissioner Tucker, Chief of Department Monaghan, and I want to thank the commanding officer of the 103 Precinct, Peter Fortune, all the leaders of the NYPD, all the men and women of the NYPD who continue to carry on Eddie Byrne's mission. I want to thank our public advocate, Letitia James, for joining us as well. 30 years. I know for so many of us, it feels that it's just flashed by. But what feels sharp and painful as ever is the notion that a coward in the dead of night took the life of a good young man, a man of such promise, such commitment. 22 years old, just starting out in every sense. For the family, I'm sure it's impossible not to think about all the joy his life could have brought and all the times that he was missed at family gatherings. For the city, it's impossible not to think about what he could have achieved. This good young man who followed in a family tradition. And I have to say the Byrne family is outstanding. I was talking to Larry a few moments ago that so many members of this family have served in law enforcement. It's so powerful and commendable. But in every tragedy, we look for something we can cling on to. And in the case of the loss of Eddie, it's something very, very meaningful. He did not die in vain by any stretch of the imagination. There was anger, there was revulsion at the death of this good young man. It was not something this city ignored. It galvanized people, created one of those moments where people said enough is enough. The city came together and with the NYPD, the people of this city said, we will not accept a situation where a young man like this is taken from us, and we will not accept lawlessness. And the NYPD, working with partners in every community, block by block, over years, proceeded to take back this city. Many believe it began that day. I think a way to think about it is this. Eddie Byrne's life may have ended, but his tour of duty never did. He continued to inspire us. And when NYPD officers to this very day run toward the danger, Eddie Byrne is there by their side, inspiring them. When New Yorkers decide that they will join with the NYPD to make things better in their community, Eddie Byrne is there. When the safest big city in America gets safer yet again, Eddie Byrne is there because he inspired so much. I want everyone to remember that in that painful time, and it was such a difficult time in the city's history, Eddie was there to protect someone who was doing what we would want them to do, who came forward to testify against a criminal gang. Man who had come to this country looking for the hope and the dream of America and wanted to contribute with his testimony to stopping something evil. 
his life was in danger, and Eddie was the person who stood between that man and that gang. By doing so, Eddie reminded us of the sacred bond between our police and our community, and that safety comes from all supporting each other, protecting each other, community protecting officers, officers protecting the community. As I conclude, I want to thank Larry and the entire Byrne family for all they have given to this city for their service to this city and to this nation, but also for how beautifully and powerfully they have kept Eddie's memory alive. This is a moment when I can say, on behalf of eight and a half million New Yorkers, we thank the Byrne family and we admire you deeply. And let us remember Eddie and live as he lived, never yielding to injustice, always fighting for justice for all, always protecting those in danger, and especially our guardians in blue. God bless the memory of Eddie Byrne. God bless his family. God bless New York City, and God bless America. Thank you. And thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. It's indeed my pride and privilege to introduce the Police Commissioner of the City of New York, the Honorable James P. O'Neill. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being here. So, I guess this is, uh, where's Larry? This is uh, day three. We had the uh, mass, right, uh, at St. Pat's. It's attended by many hundreds of people. We had uh, the memorial service last night at 107 in Inwood, uh, which, you know, it's, it's uh, 12.30 in the morning, and we still have a couple hundred people there, and, and it runs the gamut, too. Now, I was speaking to somebody that came on in 69, left in 89, and then uh, there are a number of police officers there that uh, weren't even born in 1988, believe it or not. So uh, my question was, well, why, why were we all there at 12.30 last night? And we're all there to, to mark the memory of a young man, 22 years old, think about that. Think about how young 22 years is. And five days after his 22nd birthday, he's brutally murdered uh, just because he's sitting in a, a uh, at that time, a blue and white police car wearing a NYPD uniform. And as the mayor said, uh, he didn't die in vain. You know, that was the beginning. That was a wake up call for this whole city that it was time. It was time to no longer accept the violence that was so prevalent in uh, New York City back in the 70s and the 80s. Uh, that, wasn't the high water, that wasn't a high watermark, though. In, in 1990, there were 2,245 homicides, but it was the beginning. And we continued each and every year after that to make sure that uh, the people who take this job uh, understand why they take it. They take it to make a difference and to do good and to make, make life better for the 8.5 million people in this great city. And they continue to do it each and every day. You know, it's uh, kind of remarkable. Uh, last night at uh, 12.30 in the morning, I'm, I'm looking at these young kids, and they are young kids, you know, 22, 25 years old. They uh, made a decision in their lives to, to raise uh, their right hands. And how many jobs do you actually take where you have to take an oath? Uh, not many. And uh, they raise their right hand and swear to protect the people of this great city, and they do. And they do a fantastic job each and every day. And uh, they certainly don't do it for the money. They don't do it for the appreciation. They do it because they want to make life better for people. And that's, uh, that's quite admirable. I think that uh, just, and I'm looking in this audience and I'm seeing some people that might have been here in the 70s and 80s and 90s and saw what this city was like. You know, and it didn't change by accident. It changed because a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of people hurt. Unfortunately, a lot of members of the service, a lot of police officers killed. But to look at where we are in 2018. 292 homicides last year, 780 shootings. I don't think anyone back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s could think that would be possible. And uh, it was, and it is, and we'll continue to push crime down because that's what we do. That's why we took these jobs, to make a difference, to do good, and to keep people safe. So just uh, on behalf of uh, the NYPD, to the Byrne family, uh, thank you for Eddie. And Larry, thank you for what you continue to do each and every day. Uh, you help us do our jobs, and you help us do our jobs effectively, and that's important. Because no one has an expectation that crime's going to go up in this city. 
and we need all the help we can to keep pushing it down. All 36,000 cops, 16,000 civilians, eight and a half million people in this great city, and I know we can do it because we all want the same thing. We want to live in peace, we want to live in happiness, and we want to do right by our family. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Pete Fortune, uh, thanks for hosting us again at the 103 Precinct. It's a, it's a precinct that has a terrific history, uh, a storied history, and uh, I'm so proud to be here this morning. So everybody, thanks again for being here, and uh, don't forget Eddie. Uh, as, as we walk by this sign, and it's a new sign, I think this is the third one, it really jumps out. And people have the opportunity to look up at that sign and say, who is Eddie Byrne? And the men and women of the 103 precinct can tell that story, and they can tell that story very well. Thanks once again for being here. Thank you. And thank you so much, Commissioner O'Neill. It's now my honor to introduce the public advocate for the city of New York, the Honorable Letitia James. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. I want to acknowledge uh, Larry Byrne and the entire Byrne family and thank them for their strength, their love, and their devotion. I also want to acknowledge Mayor de Blasio and Commissioner O'Neill and thank them for making this dedication possible. It's been said that every day a police officer puts on their badge they put on their badge not knowing if they will return home that night to take it off. And today we honor them and we pray for all of them, hoping that they will return home safely every night as we honor the life of Eddie Byrne. Eddie Byrne's life ended in the line of duty, a young life that was tragically taken from us far too soon. And I remember the day. You see, Larry, my mom lived on Inwood Street. Um, she lived two blocks from the tragic incident. And I remember her telling me that she and the saints on the block gathered the next day in a circle and they prayed for Larry, they prayed for Eddie, and they prayed for your family. And now that she has transitioned, she and Eddie are in heaven. And they are praying for peace for our city. And they're praying that each and every officer returns home safely. And so today we recognize his life and the sacrifice he made every day when he put on that uniform. And even though decades have passed, we can and will never forget our fallen heroes and what they risked. Because through his exemplary courage and public service, he personified what we mean by New York's finest. With the, remaining of the, with the renaming of the street, we not only celebrate his sacrifice and his life, but we ensure that his memory will continue to inspire generations who will proudly and bravely wear the badge of honor for the safety of my family, your family, and for the entire city of New York. May God bless each and every one of you, and may you return home safely every night. Thank you. And thank you so much, Public, public Advocate James. And I'd like to introduce the commanding officer of the 103 Precinct, Deputy Inspector Peter Fortune. Thank you. It is a true honor to be able to say a few words here today, and even a greater privilege to serve as the commanding officer of a precinct where such a hero like police officer Edward Byrne once worked. I want to thank Mayor de Blasio, Police Commissioner O'Neill, First Deputy Commissioner Tucker, Chief Monahan, Chief Harrison, Assistant Chief Barrer, all the executives here today, President Lynch and the PBA, every uniformed and civilian member of the service, active and retired the men and women of the 103rd Precinct, and the community residents they came out to celebrate today. Thank you for coming here to share in the life and legacy of Officer Byrne. We assemble in front of this precinct to pay our respects, reflect, and honor a then 22-year-old police officer who was senselessly murdered one fateful night while sitting in his patrol car 30 years ago today. Officer Byrne was murdered protecting a family that he never met while not ever knowing that at the same time, he would unite a department, a city, and a nation. To his brother, Deputy Commissioner Byrne, to all the family, friends, and colleagues of Police Officer Edward Byrne. On behalf of the 103rd Precinct, it is an honor to work in the same command, to patrol the same streets, and to wear the same collar brass that he once did. I didn't know Eddie, but every time I walk through those doors, at 168-02 P.O. Edward R. Byrne Avenue, 
I know he's personally watching over me and all my officers. I've learned a lot about him over the last several days, listening to stories told by his brother and a few old timers that came by last night and shared some memories. I can only hope my legacy is a quarter of what he left behind. So like many other commanding officers that came before me, I promise that we will never ever forget Eddie here at the 103rd Precinct. We will always keep him in our hearts and prayers because that's how we honor heroes. Every time we pass by that street sign, we will remember the ultimate sacrifice he made that dark and dreary night 30 years ago today. God bless Officer Byrne. God bless the Byrne family. Thank you. And thank you so much, Deputy Inspector Fortune. I am truly honored to introduce Deputy Commissioner Larry Byrne. Thank you all for being here today on uh, this very special day for my family and this very special day for the NYPD and for the city. Mr. Mayor, thank you for your kind words about Eddie and thank you for your unwavering support for the NYPD and the women and men of the NYPD in the past five years that you've served as mayor. Commissioner O'Neill, thank you for once again remembering Eddie, remembering his service and remembering his sacrifice. Uh, to my good friend, public advocate, James, thank you for being here. I remember that your mother lived here, and from the minute people learned what happened to Eddie, the response of the people in this community, the officers of the 103, the people who lived here, the people who worked here, the business owners, the people who worshiped here, their outpouring of support for Eddie and to my family was just incredible, and it's continued 30 years later. So I thank all of you for that. Pete, I don't have to tell you that you are the commanding officer of a very special precinct, a very special house, and I know that you'll do a great job as you have throughout your career. When Eddie graduated for the police academy for the second time in December of 1987, he actually spent a year as a transit officer when the transit was a separate department. And he went off to do his NSU in Manhattan he had to list his preference, and his first and top choice after his NSU was to work in the 103. Why? He wanted to work in a busy house. He wanted to work in a busy precinct. And then, 1988, like today, the 103 was one of the busiest precincts in the city. Unlike today, in 1988, it was one of the most dangerous. The residents and business owners here, terrorized by violence and drug gangs who tried to control whole parts of the neighborhood public housing projects, street corners. And because of what you all have done, the people who worked with Eddie in this precinct and this department in 1988, the tens of thousands who came after him, and the more than 36,000 who are here today, this is now one of the safest neighborhoods in the city, a great community of hardworking people who support uh, Eddie and their police officers. This is a very special tribute uh, to have this street named after Eddie and to have it rededicated today with our beautiful new blue signs that honor all of our officers killed in the line of duty. And we have very, several of our very special line of duty families here today. Thank you all for being here once again to show your support. Um, the first time uh, this street uh, was named for Eddie and the first sign went up, it was a very important priority of the mayor at the time, Mayor Koch. Uh, he felt it was very important to recognize uh, what Eddie meant to this community and this precinct. For this young kid from the Bronx, only 22, here we are 30 years later, all of you here, and another mayor of New York City here to honor and remember. That's a very special uh, tribute to him. For the last 30 years, Newly assigned officers to the 103 have been told to report to duty here, and they're told that they have to report to the location, Edward Byrne, P.O. Edward Byrne Avenue. For the last 30 years, members of this great community seeking the help and support of their officers have had to come to the 103, and they've had to go to P.O. Edward Byrne Avenue. With this new sign, that will come, continue for years and decades to come, 
and people will remember the story of this young officer, a life and a career cut too short, but a life and a career that made a difference and continues to make a difference today, in large part because all of you continue to remember him. You honor his sacrifice and you remember his service. That's a tremendous honor to me and my family, a tremendous comfort to all of us, and it really is quite an extraordinary act of, of kindness and of remembrance. We live in a very different city today, as Mayor de Blasio, as Commissioner O'Neill has said, thanks to the incredible work, dedication, sacrifices, motivation, and professionalism of the women and men of the NYPD and the women and men of the 103 precinct. Uh, your accomplishments are, are quite amazing in protecting all of us in this great city, and we're grateful to you for that. I want to thank you all for coming out on yet another cold day to remember my brother. And in closing, uh, I want to say to the officers of the 103 precinct and all of the officers from the NYPD today, uh, two things. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for your incredible sacrifice and what you do every day when you put on your uniform and your shield and you come to work. And today and every day when you leave here, please stay safe, have a safe tour. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please remain standing as we invite Commissioner Byrne to join the mayor and the police commissioner and the first deputy commissioner and the chief of department over by the sign for the unveiling. After the unveiling, we'll have the blessing by Monsignor Romano, and then we will conclude with uh, everyone joining our singer, Police Officer Makia Brown, in the performance of God Bless America. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless this new sign, which will be an everlasting memorial to the life and the dedication of police officer Edward Byrne. May all who come to see it know the bravery of this young man and of all the members of the New York City Police Department. May God bless the Byrne family. May God bless the NYPD. And as always, may God bless the United States of America. Amen. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the nights with the lights from 
from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the ocean, to it with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Thank you, Officer Brown. Thank you, Monsignor Romano. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our unveiling ceremony. We invite you into the 103 Precinct Station House for light refreshments. Have a pleasant day and a safe trip home. Thank you. Right behind you. Right behind you. There you go. I knew Ooh, nice, nice haircut.